Deep in the caves of Belgium, researchers have found the grisly evidence that Neanderthals did not just feast on horses or reindeer, but also on each other. Just a few years after Charles Darwin first expounded his theory of evolution, scientists discovered evidence that cannibalism was practiced here. The bones in Goyet Cave date from when Neanderthals were nearing the end of their time on Earth before being replaced by Homo sapiens. Both ritual cannibalism and headhunting practices are rooted in magic and religion, and they are signs of man's spiritual awakening, though their exact meaning is unclear. Once regarded as primitive cavemen driven to extinction by modern humans, studies have found that Neanderthals were actually sophisticated beings, but there is a growing body of evidence that they also could have been pure nightmare fuel. Indeed, Neanderthal man is accused of having been a voracious cannibal. Bones from their ancient feasts are buried in the debris that has accumulated inside their caves. The evidence shows that the Neanderthals of Goyet Cave were butchered, with the hypothesis of their exploitation as food sources the most parsimonious explanation for the observed bone surface modifications. Goyet Cave provides the first unambiguous evidence of Neanderthal cannibalism in Europe, and given the dates obtained on the Neanderthal remains, it is most likely that they were processed by their fellow Neanderthals as no modern humans are known to have been in the region at the time. Human bones from a newborn, a child and four adults or teenagers who lived around 40,000 years ago show clear signs of cutting and of fractures to extract the marrow within. Faunal remains of the Pleistocene were discovered, including mammoth, horse, cave hyena, woolly rhinoceros, reindeer and cave bear bones. All levels contain mammoth remains, including an unusual number of molars. It has been suggested that the Neanderthal occupants brought mammoth heads to the site and ate the brains. Because many of the molars were unworn, these would have been very young or newborn calves, killed in early spring, when plant food would not yet have been available. The mammoth remains display a large proportion of cut marks caused by stone tools when the meat was cut, and the bones display fractures as a result of having been broken to extract the marrow. The remains have scrape marks, indicating that they were butchered. The bodies are skinned and filleted, the bones show cut marks, and were cracked to extract the marrow. The highly fragmented Neanderthal collection of the third cave at Goyet represents at least five individuals. A third of the Neanderthal remains at this site display cut marks, and many bear percussion marks caused when the bones were crushed to extract the marrow. The comparison of the Neanderthal remains with other remains of fauna recovered on the site, including horses and reindeer, suggests that the three species, including the Neanderthals, were consumed in a similar way. Nonetheless, this discovery expands the range of known Neanderthal behavior in Northern Europe with respect to the dead. The Neanderthals displayed great variability in their behavior, including in their relationship with the dead. There is evidence on different sites that the Neanderthals buried the dead. Other sites show that the Neanderthals ate the meat and broke the bones of their fellow Neanderthals for food. Evidence of this cannibal behavior has been discovered at various sites in France and on the Iberian Peninsula. The caves at Goyet have been occupied since the Paleolithic era. Now an international team has proved from the bones found at Goyet that the Neanderthals were cannibals. The bones show traces of cutting to disarticulate and remove the flesh. The Neanderthals broke these bones in the same way that they broke those of the reindeer and horses found at the entrance of the cave, certainly to extract the marrow. What's more, five Neanderthal remains display signs of having been used as soft percussors to shape stone. The Neanderthals used rocks to shape stone tools, and also used bone in some cases to sharpen the cutting edges. However, the available data make it impossible to determine whether the modifications observed on the Neanderthal skeletal material represent symbolic practices or simply result from the processing of immediately available sources of food. But the freshness of the blanks used suggests that Neanderthals may have been aware that they were using human remains. 
whether this was part of a symbolic activity or induced by a functional motivation, cannot be attested at this time. Neanderthals mostly disappeared from the fossil record around 40,000 years ago, after a demographic history of small and isolated groups with high but variable levels of inbreeding and episodes of interbreeding with other Paleolithic hominids. However, Neanderthals may have clashed violently during their long existence in Europe, and they may have either eaten their Neanderthal opponents or taken their teeth as trophies. French anthropologists conducted a new analysis of a jawbone found in a cave in southwest France. They say that the jawbone probably belonged to a Neanderthal, and that it shows cut marks similar to those found on reindeer that were butchered. They believe that the jawbone was cut in the process of removing flesh and the tongue, a technique also used on the deer, and this proves that other Neanderthals were fair game for consumption too. Thus, evidence shows some Neanderthals met a violent end and in some cases ate each other. For years, people have tried to hide away from the evidence of cannibalism, but we have to accept it took place. The discoveries in Spain and France provide compelling support for that argument. The bones provide crucial evidence that Neanderthals attacked other Neanderthals and sometimes killed them, bringing back their bodies to caves, to eat or to use their skulls or teeth as trophies. Nevertheless, this is not even the worst case of Neanderthal savagery. Deep in a cave in the forests of northern Spain are the remains of a gruesome massacre. The first clues came to light when explorers came across a pair of human jawbones in the cave, called El Cidron. Then scientists determined the remains were of Neanderthals, who were killed and cannibalized 49,000 years ago. The evidence shows that our big-headed cousins were cannibals, and probably not because they needed the calories. Today, El Cidron is one of the most important sites on Earth for learning about Neanderthals. Scientists have found 1,800 more Neanderthal bone fragments in the cave, some of which have yielded snippets of DNA. This meant they were kept in a condition unlike almost any other Neanderthal remains, and proved a perfect snapshot of a single, deadly clash, likely between two local groups. The stone tools found at the site of the slaughter came from a few kilometers away, suggesting their fellow Neanderthal attackers were probably also their neighbors. But what exactly happened to the El Cidron Neanderthals? Scientists who analyzed the bones and DNA report the gruesome answer. The victims were members of an extended family, slaughtered by cannibals. Unlike the earliest anatomically modern humans who coped with periods of food shortage by joining forces in large, efficient groups, Neanderthals tended to gather in small family groups of around 10 to 12 people. When times were tough in winter, this meant they had to resort to extreme measures. The study shows the Neanderthals butchered their rivals, breaking open their skulls and bones to extract the marrow. It must have been a big feast, and the bone pile likely washed through a sinkhole from a rocky shelter above, eventually settling in the small alcove of the El Cidron cave system where they were found. Indeed, scientists think they were killed in winter when food was short. There is no evidence of any campfire, so they were eaten raw immediately and every bit of meat was consumed. They even cut around the mandibles of the jaw to extract the tongues. Their end was a bloody one, with distinct markings on the bones showing they fell victim to cannibalism. They all show signs of cannibalism. They have cut marks on many bones, including skulls and mandibles. There are many different markings in many different bones in all individuals, including traditional cut marks to disarticulate bones and remove muscle insertions and snapping and fracturing of long bones to extract the marrow. The long bones have been fragmented to obtain the marrow, so all the signs of cannibalism that have been described in other Neanderthal sites are present in all these individuals. There are two possible reasons why Neanderthals would have dined on their dead. One is that they needed to eat whatever was at hand, including human flesh, because ecological conditions for their survivorship, such as extreme cold weather and no meat from hunting, were really hard. The other possibility is that this was done in the context of something we may think of as symbolic. The virtual absence of animal remains at the site may point to ritual killings or unsuccessful hunting. Neanderthals are thought to have subsisted primarily on meat. The victims from El Cidron Cave, on the other hand, showed no evidence for meat consumption, 
but appeared instead to have a largely vegetarian diet comprising pine nuts, moss, mushrooms, and tree bark, showing quite different lifestyles between the groups. Lastly, Neanderthals are characterized by a suite of morphological features that in combination produce a unique morphotype. Although there is still discussion over their taxonomic status and relationship with modern humans, it is now commonly recognized that they represent a distinct Eurasian evolutionary lineage sharing a common ancestor with modern humans in the Middle Pleistocene. This Neanderthal lineage is thought to have been isolated from the rest of the Old World, probably due to the climatic conditions of the glacial cycles. Glacial climate conditions are often thought to have been at least in part responsible for the evolution of some of the distinctive Neanderthal morphology, although genetic drift was probably also very important. The causes of the Neanderthal extinction are not well understood, but there are many theories. Throughout history, cannibalism hasn't just been practiced by bloodthirsty psychopaths. Common motivations for eating human flesh include times of starvation, warfare, and ritualistic behavior. Indeed, we can conclude that some Neanderthals died and were eaten. Some of these human bones have also been used to make tools to touch up the edges of flints to resharpen them. But the reasons for the cannibalism remain a mystery, as to the extent to which the Neanderthals ate their dead. Some Neanderthals in Europe showed signs of nutritional stress during periods of extreme cold, and they worked especially hard to extract every calorie from the meat and bones during colder time periods. Research uncovered a pattern showing that cold, harsh environments were stressful for Neanderthals. As the climate got colder, Neanderthals had to put more into extracting nutrients from bones. This is especially apparent in evidence that reveals Neanderthals attempted to break open even low marrow yield bones, like the small bones of the feet. During colder glacial periods, the bones were more heavily processed. In particular, they showed higher frequencies of percussion marks, indicating a nutritional need to consume all of the marrow, probably signaling reduced food availability. These findings further support the hypothesis that climate was a factor in Neanderthal extinction. If Neanderthal populations were already on the edge of survival at the end of the Ice Age, the increased competition that occurred when modern humans appeared on the scene may have pushed them over the edge.